can you get the football in space? <laughs> uh, you can get one TV channel sent up. Uh, and normally the space station commander gets to pick that TV channel. Oh, so my what, what God. We, right now, uh, we are joined by everyone's favourite spaceman. He is the UK's most famous spaceman as well. It's the one, the only, Tim Peake. Yeah. Yeah. Ground control to Major Tim. Tim, how many times have you had this? Yeah. <laughs> Every a time. Few, a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim, we want to do something with you that we did recently with Bear Grylls. So we had him on and we got so many messages about this. He answered TikTok myths uh, about survival. And you're in this morning, so we thought it's the perfect excuse to do this, but about space. People okay. have so many questions and I'm sure you've been asked all mm. sorts. So it's almost a challenge to everyone listening this morning. What would you like to ask Major Tim? Yeah. We've scoured TikTok to find some of these myths as well and people who want to ask questions. Are you up for trying to answer them? Oh, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Give it a go. So, so I like this first one. How do you wash your clothes in space? We don't. Uh, oh. So <laughs> as a mixture of just wearing them longer um, and then we throw them away. But I actually wore the same pair of trousers for six months on board the space station. Wow. Um, I did change my underpants. Uh, <laughs> But you just don't get so dirty uh, because your skin's not rubbing against your clothes, your, your skin's not flaking off in the same kind of way. Um, and when we exercise, we have a sort of a wet flannel wash down and put the same clothes back on again. And some of the clothes we've got have been tested over the years for antibacterial quality, so they'll last, last a lot longer. But the smelliest is your PE kit because we do exercise for about an hour and a half, two hours every day. And one set of PE kit has to last seven days. So, you know, you're, you're wow. happy. You're happy when that uh, change round day comes. You know when you say you throw it away? Where yeah. do you throw it? It goes in, so we have cargo vehicles arriving right. with all the fresh stuff, so science experiments, food um, uh, and clothing. Um, and then when we uh, we reload those cargo vehicles with rubbish and then they'll undock and burn up in the atmosphere. So wow. that becomes our rubbish vehicle. And you're leaving it seven days, but can you smell the clothes in space? Okay, this is going to be the most childish question that you're going to experience today, I imagine. But if someone was to... Yeah. to find space. Can you can, can you actually smell it? Does it <laughs> yeah. sort of register? Yeah, it, it it does, but we've got very strong airflow systems, which is a good thing. Right. Um, and they weren't designed for farts, actually. They were designed because we're breathing out carbon dioxide all the time. And if we didn't have strong airflow, a bubble of carbon dioxide would just build up around our heads and then, of course, we would potentially um, yeah. you know, uh, become unconscious and have CO2 poisoning. So, so that airflow keeps everything, all the smells, all the nasty things, it filters them, purifies the air and outcomes cleaner what about this one do you put the heating on in space that's a good one um we keep about 20 21 degrees on the space station and the biggest problem is keeping cool not keeping warm because we've got so much electrical equipment yeah. but it's all generating heat and all that electrical equipment is mounted on coal plates uh, and that water takes the heat out into space um, uh, into our radiators and they're actually cooling the whole space station so we don't need to have any uh, heat other than electrical shell heaters and they're like um, heater mats on the actual hull or structure so when we go into the shadow of earth you go to nighttime in space freezing freezing cold and so they keep the hull warm but otherwise no heat Wow. There's so many conspiracies on TikTok. Almost don't want to be that guy, but I feel like I've got one opportunity to ask you this. With the moon landings, um, there's so much stuff on TikTok around, say, the wind on the flags and the shadows that were that make people uh, suspicious as to whether they really happened or not. Yeah. In your opinion, what, what's your take on all of that? Let's just clear this up for the whole of TikTok. Right, so we'll start by the moon landings happened, <laughs> yeah, uh, every right. one of them. Um, but why does it look like it's staged? Well, again, when you go into space, it looks like a studio. It's the brightest white light. The sun is pure white. It's not yellow. Yet We see it yellow because it comes through our atmosphere, scatters the light, and we get a nice yellow sun. Mm. In space, it's white. It's a nuclear fusion reaction. It's the whitest, purest white you'll ever get, which means the colours are the purest colours you'll ever get get because that white light is hitting the colour and showing you true colour. Your shadows are the crispest straight line shadows you'll ever see because again there's no scattering of light so um, it's, it's either black or it's white. So you look around you on a spacewalk and you feel like you're in a studio. You've got a single source of bright white light, clear shadows, amazing colours. So these photographs coming back from the moon, of course they don't look like on Earth. They, they look they, like, they look like they're, they're in a studio. studio. Um, and the wind? 
it's just that's gravity, but it's not flapping at all. It's they're static, but a flag or any piece of material. If you look at the images coming back from the space station today, you'll see there are flags and bits of paper and stuff, and they've got that kind of crinkle in them. That's just the, the natural position a material will want to go to in weightlessness. I mean, <laughs> you make a very good point. <laughs> You make can't a very, argue. With you can't, can't, can't really argue with Major can Tim. You? No, exactly. My my biggest question: uh, Can you get the football in space? <laughs> uh, you can get one <laughs> TV channel sent up, uh, and normally the space station commander gets to pick that TV channel. Oh so my what, what god! What were you watching? Uh, what? Well, it was a real shame because I was up there um, during the the Trump Clinton uh, election process, oh, yeah. and so when we first got on board, Scott Kelly was our commander. So we had three months of CNN. And then it changed to Tim Coper as a commander and it went to three months of Fox. So can you imagine oh, being wow. on a space station? Just kind of jumping news. between those two new channels. But when, when Mission Control heard this, they felt sorry for me. And when I was running the London Marathon, they said, Tim, we're going we're gonna to send the BBC up. So um, from that point onwards, I had a, a, quite a bit of BBC. So hang on, so you well. watched the London Marathon in space? Live whilst I was running it, and which that- was brilliant. So I was on the treadmill, just watching everything happen, you know, down I in London. I remember this. It was a wonderful experience. It really gave me a lot of motivation for keeping going. And in theory, then, was that the first... I mean, these are the first TV shows to be watched in space, right? Uh, well, yeah, on board the space station. No other space station has ever had TV up there. So, yes, everything on the space station's first TV. Incredible. Man, we'd have to get the football up there. <laughs> Uh, that'd have to be a must, 100%. <laughs> hey, look, Tim, thank you so much for coming in, mate. It's always thank so you. amazing. You're fountain of knowledge when you come in. Uh, episode two of Secrets of Our Universe is on Tuesday, 9 p.m. on Channel 5. You can watch the first episode back right now. Till then, please give it up. Ground control to Major Tim. Tim Big, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.